What's up everybody? It's Travis here from Travis.media. Quick story for you. When I was first learning to code, Git was easy. I learned it, I learned how to code, and I landed my first gig. Well, my first gig was like building a website or something small for a client. So it was just me in a code base. Git was easy. And then later I got a gig with an agency and it was me and a senior developer. Still, Git was easy, it was just me and him. But when I landed my first corporate job and there was a project manager, a senior dev, a mid-level dev, a designer, stakeholders, a DevOps team, and most of these people committing to the same large code base, I got worried. I knew Git, I felt confident in Git, but I couldn't help feeling like I was going to screw up the code base. I was gonna overwrite somebody's code or I was gonna make some dumb mistake that made me look really amateur. And to be honest, every now and then when I push code, I get that feeling again. And based on comments from you guys, you feel the same. Git's okay when you're working on your own hobby project or a small project, but when you get into these big code bases and you're working with really good developers with lots of experience, you don't wanna screw things up. You get nervous when you build out some new feature in a branch and then you go to push it up and then you go to merge it in and a conflict happens or something like that. And those kind of feelings make you uncomfortable with Git. So what I'm going to do in today's video is I'm going to give you seven tips to help you overcome your fear of version control, to help you feel more confident working in the code base, working with other people, and not having any fear of screwing things up. So let's get started. Tip number one, merge master before committing your code. This is just good practice, especially for your team out there. If you create a branch and you're working on stuff for a week or two weeks, there's gonna be people committing their branches and those branches are gonna be merged into master. And by the time you're done with your feature and you wanna merge yours in, the master branch or main branch is gonna be completely different. The file that you worked on may have been changed since you last checked it out. And when you go to merge that in, you're gonna have merge conflicts or maybe you'll overwrite somebody's change and you don't want that to happen. So whenever you check out a branch, when you're done working, you need to merge in master before committing your code. And let me quickly show you how to do that. So I have a branch here checked out called test branch two. And let's say I've made the changes, I've been working on this for a week or two, and I've made my commits. Now I don't wanna just push this branch up to GitHub. I wanna make sure I have all the changes that have happened in my master branch also included in this branch so that I'm up to date with what's happened while I've checked out this branch. So all you have to do is, I'm on the test branch too, all you have to do is get checkout master, go to the master branch. Once you're on the master branch, make sure you pull all of the changes, git pull origin master. So pull all the latest changes to your local master branch, then switch back to the branch you are on and merge in master. So here, git, merge master. And what you've done here is you've pulled all of the latest changes from master, and then you're gonna merge those changes into your branch before you push it up. So git merge master, enter, and my branch is up to date. So when I push it, I'm not gonna have any conflicts. I'm not gonna overwrite anybody's code. That's number one. Number two, learn how to undo a local commit. Let me give you a scenario why. So on my own website here, I have some automation in place to pull my latest posts from Google Analytics every 24 hours and update this popular.json file. That way on my homepage, I can list my top five trending posts. Now, when I come on here and I make some changes to my website, I often forget to pull the latest changes. Since this is updating every 24 hours, I need to pull the latest changes before I start making changes. And I often forget to do this. So I'll make a bunch of changes, I'll commit those changes locally, and I'll go to push them up. And I get this error saying, the code base ahead of you is out of sync, you need to pull the changes first before you can commit or before you can push changes. And I can show you right here. So let's say I go here and I change this date to like 7.5 and let me stage that, commit it, updated date, commit that, and then I'm gonna do a git push. In this scenario, there has been a change. The automation has run. I haven't pulled the latest changes, but I just committed locally and now I'm gonna push these changes up. And I get this error. Failed to push some refs. Updates were rejected because the remote contains the work that you do not have locally. Simple fix, all I need to do is git pull. But I can't git pull because I've already made a commit. This happens to me a lot, and this may happen to you when you're working with others. If you forget to pull the latest changes, you make some changes, and you go to push, you might get this error. So there's a command that you need to write down that you might use a lot, and it'll save you in a pinch. And that command is git reset dash dash soft head caret one. Now let me explain what this means. So head, this word head, refers to the currently checked out branches latest commit. So head means 
this branch's latest commit. When you add on this tilde one, it's gonna move the head to the intended commit, which is one back, and discard everything else forward. Now that seems like a problem, but we put this soft flag here, which means it's not going to undo my changes. It's gonna undo the commit and keep my changes, which is great. That's all I wanna do is undo it, pull the latest changes, and then commit it again. If you set this to dash dash hard, it is gonna undo your changes. So it's gonna pull back that commit and undo your changes. But when I run this as soft, hit enter, you'll see up here, under stage changes, my changes are back. My commit's gone, but now all I have to do is do a git pull to grab those latest changes, and now I can make my commit. Change date, commit, and git push, boom. So that git reset soft command, write it down somewhere, you'll need it. Number three, and this one will be quick as it's theoretical, but there's no fear in branches. Don't be afraid. Once you create a branch, you're off of the main code base and you have your own playground to work in. So when you start making a bunch of changes and you get worried about it, don't worry. That branch is a safe place for you to code. So always create that branch. And then when you're done with it, remember to merge in master and push it up. Number four, merge conflicts. Everyone hates merge conflicts, right? Anytime it happens, we just panic. And my advice for you today is to handle merge conflicts in VS Code. Don't try to do it in the terminal. I know it looks similar, but VS Code just makes it much more understandable. It gives you options to click on. It sets up your commit for you. It's just wonderful. Let me give you an example. Here's a file in the master branch of this code base. It's just a markdown file and it says, this is a test page to do add some content. So on the master branch, there's this page here. It's a test page and there's a to do to add some content. Well, another dev has created a branch and made changes to this. And this dev hasn't pulled the latest changes. He's gonna try to merge it in and we're gonna have a merge conflict. So let's see how this works. So get merge, test branch five is what he's working on. We're gonna try to merge this in and it's gonna create a conflict. So boom, now we have a conflict. But in VS Code, this looks nice. If you gotta do it from the terminal, you're gonna see this. Let's cat that file. You're gonna see basically the same thing and you're gonna have to work it out in the terminal. I prefer to work it out in VS Code. So I see here in master, the current change is this is a test page to do add some content. But then someone else wants to put, this is some content added by another dev on another branch. And with merge conflicts, I have basically three options. I can accept the current change, which means accept this change here. I can accept the incoming change, which means accept this content here. So there may be one, and this is where you have to determine what you want this file to look like. What's right? Do I want the current change? Do I want to keep that? Or do I want to accept the incoming change? So you can decide by clicking this here, accept current change, or clicking accept incoming change. You can also accept both changes. Just allow them both to live in the file. Now, I don't want to get in the weeds with this, but my point here is that this is very easy to do with VS Code. It makes sense to me. I can see it visually. I see the green. I see the blue. I see the current change and the incoming change. Let's say I want to keep them both. Accept both changes. Now, the last part many people forget, and this is very important, is you have to commit this change. So I just come over here. I stage it, and I make that commit. Merge conflict resolved. Let me know if you want to see that in more detail in a separate video. I can go over merge conflicts in detail. Number five in continuing on with VS Code, just use it. Don't try to be a terminal master. I know a lot of people are like, I do everything in the terminal. I don't like anything visual. I'm just much faster, blah, blah, blah. It's 2023. I'm looking for a better workflow, an easier workflow. If I have to go and type out git checkout, git add dot, all that stuff by hand, that's fine, but I can do it much faster in VS Code. You've seen me committing files over here. I just grab one, I stage it, I type a message, and I commit it. In addition, I have a couple of extensions. First, there's git history, view git history. So instead of doing git log down here in the terminal and just kind of sifting through all this stuff, don't do it. Just come here and you can see a nice visual representation of all that you've been doing. Of course, my code base is small, it's just me. I make a lot of little changes straight to master. But if I wanna get details, I can click on a commit, I can view the changes, or I can see what was there previously, the red and the green. And what I'm getting at is it's just easier to do all of this in visual code. Of course, if you're new, you want to learn Git, you wanna learn the commands, you wanna be able to do that. But once you've done that, come on over to the winning side. Do it in VS Code. Another extension I use is git graph. So git graph, view git graph here. You get kind of the same thing, except for you can go and just like right click and check out a branch, cherry pick, revert. 
you got lots of options here. If you're working with a big team, you can see what everybody's doing. If you don't want to go and check out other branches in the terminal, you can just come here and click on checkout. So I can grab this, check out the branch, I can merge, I can do a lot of stuff. So VS Code is your friend. It's not cheating. It's not being a less capable dev. It's just being smart. It's 2023. Number six, forget about Git Rebase. You just don't need it. When you're starting out, you don't need it. In fact, you don't need it until you realize that you need it. Hope that makes sense. But don't go into a project with a lot of devs and try to do big, intricate, difficult things like doing a Git Rebase. Just don't do it. Stick to pulling branches, fixing branches, merging master, pushing branches, creating pull requests in those things. People will say, hey, he's really capable. Hey, I can depend on him. He's not going to screw up the code base. Don't get rebase until you realize that you need it and then learn it and do what you can with it. And number seven is just a word of encouragement to you. And it's that Git, the whole point of Git is so that things won't get permanently screwed up. You can rewind, you can fast forward, you can fix problems. That's the whole point of Git. It's very hard to mess things up. It can be undone. It can be reverted. At the end of the day, don't beat yourself up about it. You think you're going to push, you're going to overwrite all this stuff they're just gonna revert it. You may look stupid, but you're not gonna screw anything up. Let that be a comfort to you. So that's seven things that I think will help you be less afraid of Git in working in big repos with lots of developers. If you found this helpful, give it a thumbs up, consider subscribing to the channel, and I'll see you in the next video.